We are going to show you a video demonstration on infiltration. Here is the mannequin model. You can see that there are different areas which we are going to show you on the skeleton as well, which are important in terms of infiltration. We are going to switch quickly to the other model, which is a oste oste osteology model. This is the hard palate there and this is the junction of the hard and the soft palate there. We have incisive foramen which is the which transmits the nerves to the anterior part of the palate and the teeth and here is the greater palatine foramen which transmits nerves to the posterior teeth of the maxilla and the soft hard palate. Right behind the greater palatine foramen is the uh, lesser palatine foramen which transmits the nerve to the soft palate. While you are injecting or infiltrating to anesthetize the palatal area, it is important that you should not cross the uh, distal part of the seven, otherwise the lesser palatine nerve will be anesthetized and patient can gag. When you, whenever you are injecting, you have to divide the palate by an imaginary line in the mid palatal area of the patient and again an, another imaginary line between the crevice, gingival crevice and the mid line which will be somewhere here and you deposit along that division here somewhere. Of course in association with the tooth whatever has to be anesthetized. Now we are going to demonstrate you on how to administer infiltration anesthesia around the maxilla of a mannequin. For infiltration on the palatal side, again you have to draw an imaginary line on the patient's mid palatal area which will be here somewhere and another imaginary line dividing the mid line and the gingival crevice in the center here. Usually you will find lots of adipose tissue here to make your injection comfortable and this is the area where you should block the greater palatine nerve. As I mentioned earlier you should not go beyond the distal surface of the seven which means that the anesthesia of lesser palatine nerve can occur and can cause gagging of the patient. So you should try to remain anterior to the distal surface of the seven. Here is the incisive or palatine nerves coming through the incisive foramen. So if you want to anesthetize the anterior teeth from one to three, you can inject in this area. Mucosa in this area is quite firmly attached with the bone, so some force is sometimes required to deposit the anesthesia. Again, you have to deposit in the area between the mid, mid line here and the gingival crevice here. So you, you should be depositing somewhere here, which is quite adequate. As far as the buccal anesthesia is concerned, the anterior tooth can be anesthetized by depositing an, uh, local, in, uh, local anesthetic injection just on the top of the tooth which has to be anesthetized in the mucogingival fold which is the junction of the attached gingiva and the free gingiva here. So this is the point of injection if you want to anesthetize upper 1-1. Uh, Similarly in the back in the posterior teeth you have to deposit at the site of the root of the tooth which has to be anesthetized. Say for example if you want to anesthetize 1-4 uh, then you have to go and deposit the solution 
around here somewhere. That's the end of the infiltration in maxilla. Thank you very much.